Hey, I'm Jason from Weekend RV Adventures, and I'm standing in front of my brand new Alliance Valor 36 V11. We picked it up from the dealer yesterday and brought it home, and today I'm going to swap out the factory Rotoflex pin box with the Gen Y Executive uh, Gooseneck Coupler. When we brought it home yesterday, we borrowed my neighbor's truck. Uh, he's got the Kurt hitch, and we used that to haul it home, and it pulled great. But I had the Anderson hitch on my previous camper and decided I really like the versatility of being able to get that Anderson hitch in and out of the bed and decided to take it one step further with this one and go with the Gen Y uh, gooseneck coupler and then I won't have anything in the bed other than the gooseneck ball. So first thing we're going to do is uh, pull that Rotoflex off of here and then put the Gen Y on. So let me go uh, get the Gen Y opened up. We'll take a look at what's in the box and then we'll get started on pulling this one off. All right, let's take a look. So it's packed in some foam down in here. There is the gooseneck coupler end of it. It's a little hard to see in the box, but we'll see it better once we get it out of here. There's the safety chain kit. Now that is an extra item you have to order. It doesn't come with the safety chain kit unless you order that. And we've got the uh, instruction manuals here. There's the manual. Uh, and then you can see the cable here. This is the auto latch version. So that releases the coupler and attaches with that uh, cable release. There is a uh, manual version too that has a pin in the end, but I went with the auto latch. I uh, thought it'd be a little easier. Don't have to climb down in the bed to release that. So now let's go take a look at what we're gonna have to do to get the Rotoflex off of there. All right, I just checked it out. It looks like they're a 15 16 wrench. So I've got my uh, half inch drive ratchet with a little extension pipe here, and we'll see how they are to get loose. All right, well, I've got all the bolts loosened up. There's only three of them left holding it in, and uh, they all came out pretty easy until you got to the end where the paint was on the end of the bolt, and then I had a heck of a time getting it through the nut. So I don't know what kind of paint Lippert's using on these frames, but it seems like it's a pretty durable paint because I could barely get it through. Um, but that's all ready to go. I've got some towels on the tractor, so I'm gonna get that positioned up under there to support the weight, and then we'll pull those three bolts out that I left in and uh, hopefully just back it right out of there and be ready to put the new Gen Y uh, gooseneck connector in there. So I've got the Rotoflex pin box over here in the tractor and uh, the new Gen Y uh, gooseneck connector is sitting here. So we're going to take that out, put it in the garage and get the Gen Y in the tractor. Bryce is going to help me. Uh, it's a little awkward and heavy to move by myself. Seems like this will be the only thing you'll need two people for is uh, switching stuff in and out of the tractor if you've got a tractor to use. Otherwise, definitely a two person job. There you go. Ready? Uh -huh. So uh, I got it all lined up. It did take a little while. Um, the tractor was actually kind of tough to line up with because you turn the wheels a little bit and the tractor would lean one way or the other way. Um, having some kind of a die cart or something that you could just maneuver around easier would probably be better. Uh, two people lifting it would probably be quite difficult because it doesn't fit in there real nice. It, it's a tight fit. So, you know, it jams a little bit and you got to push and pull. So um, yeah, a cart that you could raise and lower would be ideal. 
Uh, once I got it close, I did have to go in there. I tried tapping on it with some uh, a rawhide mallet. That didn't quite get enough force to move it. I tried tapping on it with some wood blocks with a uh, little like three pound sledge. That still didn't do the trick. So then I tried some drift pins through the holes and that seemed to be the best way to get it lined up. Once I got one of them lined up, I got a bolt in then kind of worked my way around and got all the holes lined up. Uh, I've got all the bolts started now. So they're all in there. I'm just gonna go snug them all up a little bit. And then the instructions say to torque it to 110 foot pounds. So once I get them all in there and snugged up, I'll come back with a torque wrench, torque them down, and uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the installation. It does line up with a different set of holes than the Rotoflex box did. So I'll probably go back with some black spray paint and just touch that up because where the bolts came off, uh, there's spots that aren't painted underneath. So I just don't want to have anything rusting out a little early there. So we'll go ahead and touch that up. Um, so we'll finish it and then I'll let you see what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so I'm getting ready to torque everything down to 110 foot-pounds. I've got my wrench set. I did notice when I was snugging it up that the, uh, the box kind of pulls in a little bit when you snugged everything down. So I'm going to go through once and get everything to 110 and then go back and uh, alternate around and get them one more time because I'm guessing that uh, when it pulls in, it's going to loosen up a little bit. One last step to do before the installation is done, and that's to install the safety chain kit. Um, you have to take the cotter pin out, pull the hook off the chain, and then it feeds through that little cutout on the front of the hitch. So I'll go ahead and get that done, and then we'll take a walk around, and we'll do a test fit up to the truck and see how everything looks. All right, now that the installation is completely done, I'll give you a quick rundown of all the tools I used, just so you know what you'll need for doing this. Uh, I had a half inch drive ratchet with a, an extension pipe to get a little more leverage on it. I had a 15 16th socket and a 15 16th uh, combination wrench that I used for taking the bolts on and off. I also had a uh, impact, an electric impact gun that I used just for uh, pulling the bolts off once I broke them loose. Uh, that just made the job go a little faster. I had a set of needle nose pliers that I used for the cotter pin. I had some wood blocks and that little sledgehammer that I used for beating things around. And I also had the drift pin. So it wasn't too bad. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, mostly the 10 bolts come out, 10 bolts go back in. I did have to disconnect the safety uh, release for the brakes because that was in the way of the bolts when I put the new ones in. So I took that off and then just put it back on once I was done tightening everything down. But let's go ahead and get the truck hooked up now and see how everything looks. Keep going, keep going. Stop, stop. Too far back. Stop. There. There. All right, well that completes the installation and I've got it hooked up to the truck. It's definitely a little trickier uh, backing in because you can't see the ball at all down in the bed. Uh, I'm sure if you're used to a gooseneck trailer, you'd probably have no problem with it, but it'll take some, some practice for me to get used to doing that one. But everything's hooked up. It looks good. Uh, it looks like the ride height is pretty good. It's a little nose high right now, but my driveway slopes to the back. So I think once I get it up on level ground, it should be right where I need it to be. If you're interested in which hitch I have with the Valor 36V11, uh, I've got it here on my phone. It's the GH8056AL. Uh, that's a 4,500 pound tongue weight, 24,000 pound capacity. Uh, this trailer is rated at 16,000 pounds uh, gross vehicle weight and has about a 2,500 pound cargo capacity. And speaking with uh, Gen Y, they said to go with this hitch uh, because when you put a toy hauler or a toy in the back, um, it'll affect the weight. I don't know if you could see it in the video that I shot showing the hitch hooked up to the truck, but I'm right in the green area right now. Uh, so it looks like we're right where it should be. If you've got any other questions or anything you'd like to know about it, please leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. And once I get a chance to uh, go camping with this hitch a little bit, I'll give you a review on what I think of the Gen Y when it's out in use.